Yeah. So I'm Lida, and today we're talking to Dr. Teresa Hartman, who I will introduce you to in a minute. Really what this is about is over the years, I have met some wonderful people who inspire me for all sorts of reasons. So I thought it'd be great to chat to them. I always learn from them and share that experience with you. So Teresa and I have known each other for quite a long time. T, please introduce yourself however you would like to. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that you inspire me too. So thank you for inviting me to chat. Um, for those who don't know me, I am, um, I'm trained as an architect, but I discovered that I, in my architectural training, which was all by hand before computers, I discovered that I love drawing. And so I kind of, um, once I qualified, um, attached myself to various artists in, in town and learned to draw and to print and to paint and all those, those things. So I've kind of developed into an architect stroke artist, but I think my underlying passion, which is very much in line with yours, Lida, is understanding creativity and or, or how it works and what makes people tick, how we can nurture it. And um, for those who don't know us, Lida and I actually ran the creativity workshop in PE in, in Port Elizabeth in South Africa for a couple of years. And that was a very important part of my learning process. So, um, and I'm still, still learning. The, my journey with creativity led to me ultimately getting a PhD in 2019 on specifically on understanding how intuition works during the creative process. So um, that was something which really fascinated me and I wanted to sort of get my teeth into that specifically. And it ended up becoming a PhD, not that that's important. So I am Dr. Theresa Harden. I'm also adjunct associate professor at the University of the Free State in the architecture department. So I do lots of things and I love it that way. It's great. I think both of us would be very bored if we had only one thing in our lives. So variety Absolutely. is something that is very stimulating. Teresa, I was just thinking, I've always admired you as being such a free spirit and at the same time, a very independent thinker. And I think that that's maybe something that led you to your whole exploration of creativity and intuition, in a way. So that's just a little yeah, bit think, about what you discovered. Yeah, I think you, you're right. I am a free spirit, and I don't know where that comes from. I think that's something that, that I was just born with. Um, and I, I do like to think independently. I'm very, very aware of what I call sheeple, you know, people who just follow mm -hmm. what other people think. I'm always challenging the status quo. I'm always challenging the, the, the sort of the majority's opinions. And on Facebook, I cause quite a stir every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, don't know if you, I don't know if you followed some of my things, but uh, I like to just get people to think about their opinions and think about how they think mm -hmm. so yeah, that is just obviously something within me so this whole thing with with intuition um you know when I was it all started when I was teaching first year architecture students um and, and essentially I was nobody had taught me how to teach design so the whole thing was quite overwhelming and I started doing research on how do you teach people to be creative and particularly because I was teaching first years the you know coming from 12 years of, of formal schooling which was very very narrow-minded how do you get them to unlock their thinking and and almost sort of undo patterns of um you know preconceived ideas and so on so 
And when I got into the re creativity research, you know, the, the psych psychological aspects were the most published. And so things like mind mapping and brainstorming and lateral thinking and all these sort of cognitive techniques were, were there was a lot to read about that, but there wasn't, I was particularly um, wanting to find out about the very personal stuff that, that, you know, when you read artists' biographies, they talk about losing themselves, you know, in the flow and and letting the painting speak to them and um, this this whole kind of almost mystical experience where you become really so absorbed in what you're doing that you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. And that was what I wanted to understand. And in fact, for a long time, for probably 15, 20 years, I've, I, I was reading, reading, trying to find even a word for this. I, I, had, no, I had no definition of what, what this, this aspect was until I came across a book on creative intuition in literature. And I thought, this is it. So I then um, sort of zoomed in on, on intuition. What is intuition? How does it work? Looked at Carl Jung, looked at philosophy, um, philosophers such as Henry Bergson and um, William James, um, and found a whole lot of interesting stuff there that helped me to understand it. And um, because it's a, it's a non-verbal experience, it's, it's very much a, yeah, you know, you're so, so then, to try and write a thesis with words, to try and kind of explain it is almost a contradiction in terms, but um, it was it was challenging, but I, I think I, I think I got there. So I'm interested to know when you're in flow, how do you get there? And how, what does it feel like for you? Because I think it's probably different for everybody, or at least their access to it is probably. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think it very much depends on what you, what your medium is. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I would say is a common sort of denominator is the, the fact that you, it, it kind of happens when you immerse yourself in something to the exclusion of everything else. But, but and how do you get to that point of immersion? Is there a... You just start, is start there a, you, you just start working. Yeah. I think, um, and, and to, to actually just start working, keep on working and, and push through. So time, time is a big factor and solitude is a big factor. Mm -hmm. um, where you lose all self-consciousness. You know, I find that in, when I'm working, like I teach a Tuesday morning art class here, I can't make art around that table. I can do sort of very mm -hmm. sort of technical things, you know, like hatching a picture or whatever, but I, I, I'm, I cannot get into flow when I'm with others. Um, and that seems to be a pretty common thing that that solitude is is essential where you you allow sorry no i'm just thinking um do you think that's the adult in us i'm just thinking how kids yeah they they don't care who's there or anything they just create uh, so do you think absolutely. it's the adult filter that switches that off that we have to be on our own to do it although if you think we're talking, I suppose, about making art, perhaps it's different in other creative acts. Perhaps it's less necessary to be alone. I don't know. I'm just asking. Well, I think I think musicians, for example, if you if you look, musos improvise, or you or you attend a jazz concert or something like that. Um, the the musicians kind of feed off each other, and they they they. Um, the, the, the energy is inspired by the other musicians and the, which kind of leads them onto, onto improvisation. Um, but the big, and that, and that question you asked about kids is very important because yes, kids don't give a damn. You know, they're, they're just do it. They're in it and they do it because they love it. I think what happens is that 
as adults, we have developed egos and we have to, and with ego comes self-consciousness. So we, you know, we, 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 we worry about what other people think of us. And, and certainly for me, I'm always aware of other people's needs and, mm -hmm. and so on. So, so I need to be completely alone. I think when when creative people work together but yet alone you know so you can have collaborations that happen but you need to actually kind of cut yourself off from your everyday um self the 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 construct that you present to the world i think some people may be able to to do that um and i'm working on it i'm working at becoming <laughs> I'm quite, I'm really interested in this because it's not something I've thought about before. Um, I used to teach a creative design thinking module at university to computer science students. And what we found was that the synergy that developed in small groups allowed them to actually start thinking creatively and workshop and come up with ideas. So, in fact, it was almost the opposite effect. They were more creative because they were working together. Yeah. I think, so, I think that is, is your brainstorming. That is where you, you, you're coming in and you're bouncing ideas off each other and in that way developing ideas. But that's not necessarily intuition. That's not necessarily intuitive. Um, flow mm -hmm. it's it's still rationally generated it's still, so? I, I know uh, myself, uh, uh, no i'm just thinking myself i just say whatever comes um and and in that process sometimes it, um anyone, operating anyone who's worked with me knows that you know um in fact they always say we in a meeting you know i said then i i'm going to keep quiet now i'm not going to say anything and i can't and and i never know what's going to come out and it, those ideas come from there so, so, so it's, that, it's just an interesting process to, to i hadn't considered the difference before of creating on your own and creating together and is it the same or is it different Oops, we've lost you. Have you lost me? Okay, you're back. Okay. When you are in a group of like-minded people and you feel comfortable and you and and also I think maybe you've worked at losing your self-consciousness. And um, you know, because you and I have been sort of involved in the whole creative thing for, for a few years. And uh, I'm also pretty much like that, Leeds. I, you know, I blurt things out and I don't know where they come from. But I think the majority of people are, are very aware of. Absolutely. Of, um, yeah. Child yeah. or, you know, what. So, so for, for, yeah, I, I think solitude is important, but it might be solitude in groups, if you know what I mean. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's, I think what you've said is really important about the, the losing self, not being self-conscious and losing that fear of judgment. And perhaps if, if we were to set up groups, I feel safe and it's okay to make a fool of yourself or whatever it exactly. might be, then, then, it, but it's a process because when I think about it with my students and any groups that I work with, it takes a little bit of time to get to that point. So it's not mm -hmm. immediately we can go into a group and generate creative ideas. It definitely, you have to set up parameters and make it a safe space and know that people yeah. are actually not going to be judged for having wacky ideas. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they need to know each other first. There needs to be a comfort, there needs to be yeah. A kind of a sense of safety Absolutely. as you said yeah. because fear yeah. is the biggest block to creativity we know that and and we we create these fears in our in our own heads it's not it's not as though the fear is an external fear it's an internal um feeling of 
you know, what will others think and so on. Yeah. And, and I think it's just the way we brought up, it's the society we live in, um, that that we've absorbed these, these kind of constant little, um, you know, Julia Cameron calls it the inner critic. Absolutely. Um, okay. We said we were going to keep this quite short. So if you were to give someone wanting to explore their creativity who's feeling really disconnected to it, what would be one thing you would advise them to do to get started? I would advise them to um, first of all if they don't have the materials maybe just literally baby steps buy what you are drawn to um, if it's your paints that have been sitting in a box for the last five years get them out just put them out put them on the table get used to being around them you know because I think um, a, a very common thing is we separate art or creativity from life mm -hmm. and I think one needs to sort of integrate and and realize that making stuff whatever it is is as important as as earning a living or um, you know relationships with family it's it's really really important for our own um, health and so so and then I would suggest just start playing whatever, you know, if, if it's the violin or a, or a, a set of paints or watercolors or pastels or, or music or choreography, just start playing just with no objective in mind. Just get to know your medium, get to know um, what it is you're working with, find out how it behaves, find out, you know, it's almost like you sort of prod it and you push it to its limit and so on without any outcomes. And I would also recommend that, that you also develop whatever skill that you need, because um, technical skill with your medium, whether it's paint or a musical instrument, um, is, is essential for gaining confidence and for being able to um, communicate through that medium. So, you know, skill is so important. So, for, for example, in art, I always I, I recommend people learn how to draw. It's the most important thing. Um, then you your materials are are kind of secondary to that. But um, get getting out of your thinking mind is another important thing. So when I when so being an architect, I have certain times in my day where, where I have to pull myself out of architecture and th then I'll close myself up in a room I'll switch on music music always just kind of for me sets the, the shift from from being sort of responsible and deadlines and emails and that kind of thing and then I shift and I set myself a time I would set a timer so that I don't have to keep looking at the clock either um, I, I put my time on my phone and then I know I can forget about time. I can forget about people. I switch my phone off and I then allow myself to just play. And with that playing always comes um, a whole flurry of ideas. And sometimes you, you don't like what you've been playing with, but it's it's fine, you know, just stick it up. It's, it's, you've done it. And um it's important then to keep doing. But the, the whole thing of social media leads is also a huge, mm -hmm. I find that, oh, it's a killer. You know, I gave a presentation to a group of students at the Free State University about a month ago. And I was talking about intuition and being alone and, and so on. And this, this girl said to me, Teresa, we don't know how to be alone. That's so you know, my generation, mm -hmm. My generation is like a 19 year old girl. We don't know how to be alone. They've always got a phone with them. Yeah. Um, they're always connected to something. And so the brain is always, you know, engaged in something else. It's not, you're not present with, with yourself and what you want to make. I think so. This is important. 
to 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 be present in the moment with whatever you're doing even if you're even if you're not making art even if you're doing something creative like cooking or gardening or arranging flowers absolutely put your attention yeah. on that activity and bring yourself into the present moment because exactly. that then allows you to explore your connection with whatever you're doing and that's where I think the intuition will start to come perfect spot on exactly so, so that's that's an interesting um thing the the um, being present you know the whole mindfulness mm -hmm. mindfulness is, is big at the moment I think as a result of this continuous connection with the, the people are realizing that that it's not healthy it's not yeah. good for their mental health and so cultivating some sort of mindfulness practice whether it's um learning how to meditate in a very simple way just learning to be present and to get out of your head yeah get out of your head into your body whether it's cooking or gardening or or sewing, whatever it is, be be there for that for that activity, yes. and that's where where creativity comes from. It comes from attention to what you're doing. The only way to be in flow is to actually be present to be in flow. Or you can't be mm -hmm. exactly, exactly, and um, and to be disconnected. Absolutely. Teresa, that's probably about all we've got time for. Any last words for our audience? Um, no, Lise, I think this, is, this has been an interesting conversation. You've certainly given me some things to think about as well. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I, I think for anyone who, who wants to develop their creativity, just go for it. Don't tell anybody about it. Don't even announce that you're going to painting or pottery classes or whatever. You know, because then then people set expectations and like, how are you doing? And what what I would just advise people to quietly um, explore and play until you have the confidence to show people what you're doing. Oh, exactly. I think that's, that's if I can say, I think what's really important is the process is more important than result. So don't get attached to having, if you decide that you want to start painting, don't worry about having a beautiful picture to put on the wall. Engage in the process. I know I often have paintings which end up either painted over because I didn't like mm -hmm. them or cut up into bits and reused somewhere else because you're not going to get it right every time. And I think really the value of being creative is the being bit actually being in the process and not being so attached to what ends up coming out of it because the real healing and the real value is in that present moment absolutely you described it beautifully and if Products arise out of the making. Wonderful, um, but but exactly what what you say. You know, even if you make crazy stuff, you can always cut it cut it up, make it into something else, and and you'll often be surprised at what emerges. And that's the fun part. Exactly, and it is. It's like a a muscle which you develop, and the more you do it, the better the results are going to be. Teresa, that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to talk to you. And let's see what people, we will invite people to share with us what they create. Thank you. It's been really wonderful to connect with you over the airwaves. Thank you. Stay well. You too. Bye.